Hello Enchanted Ones and welcome back. Today join me as I craft for the Yuletide season, creating the winter fairy of dreams, Yuletide gifts and simple cozy decor using nature. I hope you enjoy. So sit back, relax and keep on watching. Hello Enchanted Ones and welcome. So you've joined me today in the cozy nook on this beautiful crisp winter morning in December and it just looks magical out there and I can't wait to go into the woods in a moment and it's just one of those days where you know you're gonna walk outside and your nose is gonna go red, your ears are gonna go red and you're gonna suddenly begin to fill your ears from the cold and I love it. I love this season so much and I can't wait to go out and honour it but also bring inside what it has to offer me and that is the evergreens of the woods. I have decorated my home as you can see and this year I have three trees. I have two fake trees but our glorious real tree which I'll share with you more later on but I love how they all frame the room. I've got my arch over my piano but there is so much more to do, so much more to craft, to bake and today we are going to be doing just that. So let us begin our day. I'm just going to finish my coffee and we're going to go for a leisurely stroll in the enchanted woods. Winter brings such beauty to the woods in ways I cannot describe. My walks here are short-lived in winter, but they're the most breathtaking of all seasons. I am constantly led by Robin's call who lives here down the healing trail, and I find he takes me to places and trees I have never found before. Today I am appreciating the wood's beauty, but also modestly trimming a few evergreens here and there, taking a moment to appreciate and thank the nature around me before taking any. There is no denying that evergreens are my favourite plants within the woods. They give and protect so much and are always watching over us. But today, because it was minus four, my walk was cut short. So it is now back home to cozy up and craft with my findings. So I've left everything to dry here just before I use it. In the meantime, I really want to be getting on with crafting some little witchy things I want to put at my altar, but also give as gifts to some of my friends. So the first thing I'm going to be making is some orange pomanders. The orange is a very strong symbol of Yule because it 
gives health. Over the winter, that is one thing, especially back in the day, that a lot of people treasured their health. And orange pomanders are basically air fresheners that you put around your home or in your altar. They just smell heavenly and it is a studded orange studded with cloves cloves are really great because they have antioxidants so they're really great to drink but i only like cloves in like tiny moderation they are not for me i'm afraid <laughs> but the cloves actually draw out the moisture from the orange but also their fragrance is permeated through too so you have this really lovely smelling fragrant air freshener in your home. So let us begin crafting them. But first a sprinkle of cinnamon on my candles to give an air of protection. Making pomanders is simple. I used thin skinned oranges but any orange is fine. I found it easier to put the cloves in them this way without having to use a knife. I positioned the cloves in different symbols into each orange, four corners to symbolise the four quarters of the year, spirals to symbolise the days getting shorter, and symbols of the sun to welcome back its return. I also wanted to try my luck at drying out whole oranges in the oven. For this I made slits beneath the skin of each orange until it resembled a pumpkin. I also covered them in cinnamon for protection qualities and if you want your oranges to look burnt this is the way forward. I am to place these in the bottom of each stocking at Yule. I then got back to the pomanders. To make mine extra festive, I tied around some red ribbon and placed them into a bed of fir needles at my altar. And they smelt beautiful and I've had so many compliments since. These can last up to a week at your altar if you don't want to dry them, but you can also use ribbons to tie them up and then hang them somewhere dry and dark for up to six weeks to keep them forever. Next it was on to my next craft, witch bottles. These bring protection and are good luck over the winter months. And the beauty of winter is that there are so many things that can bring protection. For mine, I used salt, which is protection against negativity. Fur needles for endurance and patience throughout the long winter months. Cinnamon for its protection and grounding qualities for when we can't go outside. Star anise for intuition and courage and well-being. Cloves for strength and courage to keep going. And before I sealed each jar, I placed a strong intention on it to add a special touch. I repeated, blessed be the Yuletide season. May this air protect the gifted one beyond reason. I spoke with a gentle calming voice and repeated this a few times before sealing with a red candle. Red during Yule symbolises the fire of the sun and also the new light that is to come, giving hope and optimism. Lots of other colours of the season, such as green, yellow and white, are strong frequencies too. Now my bottles were complete and looking beautiful, I boxed one up ready to give during Yule in this beautiful box. Along with this, I also wanted to give the gift of a mini ritual anyone can find themselves doing during Yule. And all you'll need is a fir cone and small pieces of paper. I am gifting this small fir cone, but for my altar, I am going to use this massive fir cone that I found in the woods. And I'm going to leave it at my altar, leading up to you. The idea is to write what you want to let go of in the new year, but also what you want to attract into your life next year. What do you want the next year to bring to you? And what do you want to bring to it? You could also write down what you are grateful for or what you have learnt during this year. It is a great time to reflect and learn from any lesson that life may have presented you to sum up the season. 
during the winter solstice, you may find yourself burning this fir cone outside over a fire and then your intentions will manifest under the longest moon of the year and it is so powerful. I left mine on a bed of holly at my altar, but now my little present was complete. Such a simple gift, but so meaningful and thoughtful. So I wrapped it up and it was the first present to go beneath the tree. I looked outside and the day was already turning to night, meaning it was still probably the middle of the day, which was great as I had so much more planned. My next project was to be in the dining room and each year I love dressing this table for Yule by also making an impactful centerpiece in the middle. Last week I told you that I currently love green tartan, it makes me feel so cosy but all I had of it was this scarf. Well, I went to the craft shop and I changed that immediately. I wanted to make so many things out of this abundance of fabric. Perhaps a scarf? A skirt? A shawl? Cape? Dress? Or, more realistically, some sort of table covering. I cut the fabric to be a long table runner shape, but also cut four napkin shapes and all I simply needed to do was pin them and hem them. Something I've never done before, but it was pretty simple to get a hold of. But whilst I'm busy sewing away, I invite you to have a look at my most precious tree decorations. To my luck, there was a large piece of material left over and after hemming it, it made the most beautiful shawl to wear over this winter period. I also needed to make a centerpiece for the middle of the table and I wanted it to honour nature and Yule, so I placed in the middle my pentacle wreath I made a few years ago. I really want to continue to upcycle the things I make every year instead of throwing them away. A few years ago this was a wreath, then it was at my altar and now it is in the centre of the table. What I really would have loved though was to make a structure out of hazel branches in the middle. However, because I couldn't get my hands on more than one, I used this tree decoration that I already had and I placed it in the middle of the wreath and loved this metaphoric idea of a tree growing out of a pentacle. these glass bells last year and just love how you can make them anything you want to. I wanted to honour the evergreens of the forest so I placed in each one holly, fir and ivy. leaving three plain as I wanted to place candles in these to honour the sun and my dining table was ready for Yule and celebrating. There was just one more thing I wanted to create and it was the most 
anticipated craft yet, my winter fairy. This year I made a fairy for each season, spring, summer and autumn, but I wanted to create the best fairy for winter. I first made her skirt out of black card, wrapping it to make a cone shape, sellotaping it into place. I then cut the ends of the card to be the size I wanted her to be. This fairy was going to be extra special as she was going to be on my Yule wreath. I first tied some gold thread around the bottom as I wanted to hang fur cones from this at the end and then I secured her skirt onto the bottom of the wreath with a glue gun. This next part took some time but it was so worth it. I cut plenty of ivy from the garden and individually stuck each leaf onto the dress making sure the bigger leaves were on the bottom of the dress and that they got gradually smaller and smaller giving the impression that the ivy was growing on her. I wanted the fairy to look old, like a winter's crone goddess. She was to symbolise the strength of the forest in its hibernation state. I gave her a torso from this fur cone and a little top from a larger piece of ivy. And these twisted hazel branches for her arms was just the thing she needed. A smaller fur comb would make her head and around this withered hair from moss was stuck to make her hair. Then I added a few extra details, some twisted ivy through her hair to make her look extra tangled, a long piece of fur as a broom to rid negativity, and then glued the fur cones at the bottom of the pieces of gold strings. These can also be symbolic of bells, which are also used upon Yule to rid negative spirits away from the home. And the beautiful winter crone goddess was complete. I have had so much fun creating these gifts and your crafts with you enchanted ones. It just proves that with a little inspiration from the forest and nature this time of year, anything is possible. Please let me know what was your favourite below. A blessed Yule to you all. All my love, Arlowin. Oh my, why are they so black? <gasps> it was the cinnamon, it's the cinnamon. Oh no, <laughs> they smell heavenly though. Oh no, they're so black. <gasps> Oops. Hopefully you're not thought of as a lump of coal. <laughs>